MFA updates. Good morning, สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to MFA Update. This is a weekly program that focuses on Thailand's foreign affairs and activities. I am Nishika Pumi, your host. Today, we invited His Excellency s e k w a n a m e t h i Ambassador of Thailand to Belgium and Luxembourg, and Head of Mission of Thailand to the European Union. He will inform us about Thailand's economic and investment opportunities in the European Union or EU. The foreign affairs that matter. Special guests from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is the MFA updates. Good morning, His Excellency. Welcome to the program today. Today, we would like to get an overview of the relation and cooperation between Thailand and the European Union or EU. So, I would like to start with um, what are Thailand's priorities for Thailand and EU relations? สวัสดีครับ Yes, thank you very much for the interview. Yes, of course, um, Thailand and the EU they are under the umbrella of ASEAN EU as well. But under the umbrella of the ASEAN EU, uh, the ASEAN is a dialogue partner of ASEAN for 45 years now, and this year we will celebrate the 45th anniversary of the ASEAN EU uh, dialogue. And there will be a summit meeting end of this year, where in which the leaders of the 27 EU uh, countries and the 10 ASEAN leaders will meet in Brussels in December. <laughs> now, when it comes to ASEAN EU, of course. Um, Uh, Thailand has very good bilateral relations with the individual uh, members of the EU, the, the 27 EU countries. For instance, um, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, all the all the 27 um, EU members, extending to the uh, former Eastern Europe countries and of, also the Baltic states. So, when we talk about uh, our Thai EU relations, we talk about both the bilateral with the individual EU member states and with the Organization itself, the European Commission, and of course the European Commission and its um, institutions is a very large organization. It has its own European Parliament, European Central Bank, a European Investment Bank, and of course the European Commission and the European um, Business Sector. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to EU as a grouping, um, of course Thailand, um, the EU has its uh, delegation or its embassy. In Bangkok, mm -hmm. and it uses Bangkok as a hub for various issues, particularly in terms of um, uh, cooperation and technical cooperation to the neighboring countries of Thailand as well. Now, for this year, we will uh, closer enhance our cooperation and partnership with the with the EU, with the European Commission. Uh, we will be uh, signing at the end of this year what we call the PCA. The mm -hmm. um, Partnership and Cooperation Agreement, yeah. which is a legal framework for enhancing Thai EU relations in all dimensions, uh, ranging from health to digital, education, science, technology, and also um, we will uh, be resuming the free trade agreement negotiations between Thailand and the EU. Yeah. Of course, the EU is a large trading partner, fifth uh, trading partner of of Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, Total trade is about 37,000 uh, uh, euros, mm -hmm. and um, once we start the FTA negotiations, and it takes several years to include because it needs to pass the EU uh, Parliament as well. Um, we foresee um, uh, major potentials in the increase in uh, total trade between Thailand and the EU, and so just in general the. EU is an important part of Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, the EU is also. We also um, follow the standards of the EU because the EU is a uh, the European Union. Of course, the global standards are set by the United Nations and the World Trade Organization. But the EU plays a particular role, a proactive role in international organizations in strengthening multilateralism. And so, the EU standards are. It's a trend that the EU standards will. Uh, it's a stepping stone to becoming international standards, and so Thailand and of course the ASEAN region, we follow closely the EU standard settings as they will 
eventually become global standards. And one of the key EU uh, standards setting is the Green Deal, which is their um, roadmap, their policy in implementing the uh, climate change uh, ambitions. Mm-hmm. So in terms of ASEAN, uh, 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 Thai EU, it's um, very good relations, very cordial, um, much room for further expansion, particularly under the agreement uh, to be signed, um, what we call the PCA, Partnership Cooperation Agreement. Thank you so much, His Excellency. And can I move on to another question? Like, I want to know how does the EU view Thailand? The EU they recognize Thailand as the hub of Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Now, the again under the rubrics of the ASEAN EU, ASEAN EU partnership is now being has now been elevated to a strategic partnership. Mm-hmm. And as it's, and. The ASEAN as a strategic partnership with the EU, Thailand is recognised by the EU as the hub of Southeast Asia, not only because of our geographical um, location, but because of the infrastructure and the potentials of of using Thailand uh, as a business hub, an investment hub, a trading hub, um, not only for the ASEAN region of a population of 600 uh, million, uh, but also um, ASEAN using Thailand as a hub for, uh, for ASEAN Plus, so as a springboard into East Asia, into South Asia, such as India. And that is in terms of trade investment. And of course, um, with the uh, industrial development in Thailand, um, under the uh, B- BCG policy yeah. of bio um, green economy, BGC. So uh, it means that um, there are a lot of interests uh, on the part of EU investors um, particularly in the context of private public partnership now that's on the business uh, economic side now on the political side they recognize thailand as a, of course as a strategic partner as a natural partner of the eu um, as a um, uh, as thailand um, shares the uh, many of the values and norms of the eu they see Thailand as a partner in promoting democracy. Um, They recognize the progressive policies in Thailand as a model for um, technical cooperation to other countries, particularly in terms of Thailand's implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, the SDGs, the 17 goals. And Thailand um, is a model for development in which the EU can use for other countries in the developing world, not only just in, in Southeast Asia amongst our neighboring countries, but um, in Africa and in Latin America. In terms of um, um, human rights and democracy, they see Thailand, um, they recognize and they commend Thailand's progressive policies. For instance, um, Thailand's uh, universal health coverage, um, Thailand's policies uh, towards uh, the promotion and the upholding of the dignity of migrant workers, um, Thailand's um, uh, human rights policies in promoting the guiding principles and adopting the the plan of action for the guiding principles of human rights and and business. And um, so when it comes to uh, Thailand's um, um, reputation and credibility Mm -hmm. um, in the eyes of the EU, they see us as a as a strategic partner mm-hmm. in promoting not just ASEAN EU relations or cooperation or partnership, but in as a partner in strengthening multilateralism in the uh, international um, arena, such as the particularly in the United Nations, in which Thailand and the EU delegation we work closely in promoting um, a, um, all the um, in key UN issues um, to strengthen multilateralism. Thank you so much. And finally, as we know that the world right now is facing with many unprecedented challenges and disruptions, whether they be geopolitical, economic or technological. So in your view, how is the EU adapting to these challenges and changes? Yes, a very good question. Um, As we have seen since the the COVID, um, that was an an unprecedented uh, challenge, which had a detrimental global impact um, beyond any calculation. And of course, that was a, a, a lesson and a challenge for the EU. And they are now in the recovery period. So their policy is to recover and to build resilience. That's within the EU of comprising the 27 
member countries. Mm-hmm. And because of that, of the experience of the COVID and the challenges arising from the from the COVID pandemic, um, which was the disruption of the global supply chain. So now that they've recovered from the pandemic, now it's in the process of strengthening resilience. So in strengthening resilience, they now become more Want, they want to be more dependent within and amongst themselves of the 27 countries and not to be too dependent on the global supply chain mm-hmm. and how to overcome their dependency on the global supply chain. They have their policy, what they call the strategic et- autonomy. Of course, it, they still need to promote in, uh, international trade, uh, become uh, promoting global supply chains around the world, but it does mean that they will become more are selective in those strategic supplies which they would probably want to manufacture within the EU mm-hmm. uh, region more than to be dependent on um, supplies from, particularly from Asia. Uh, those key strategic supply chain, the supply um, materials are those of the, um, in the electronic uh, field, the um, chips, semiconductors, um, even in terms of the uh, medical supplies. So. That is one um, approach that they they are pursuing, uh, which is to um, pursue the policy of strategic autonomy, meaning that they would like to be less dependent on the global supply chain because of the disruptions which has on the on their economies. Mm-hmm. Uh, another challenge uh, and another approach is as a result of the uh, conflict in Afghanistan last year and with the um, conflict in Ukraine the EU has now become, they attach more importance to defence and security issues, not just within Europe, but into, uh, but uh, it applies to that approach in Asia as well. Mm -hmm. And so they adopted a a policy, what they call the um, uh, strategic compass, which means um, increasing their defence budget and, and at the same time how to accelerate the deployment of European security forces, Mm -hmm. Um, not just in Europe, but they're looking at Asia as well. So given the new uh, geopolitical strategic landscape, both in Europe and in in Asia, both in terms of the political side and the geoeconomic side, um, there has been uh, new approaches by the EU, which of course offers opportunities and challenges the opportunities means, of course, uh, for the expansion of partnerships uh, between the EU and Asia countries, particularly ASEAN and particularly Thailand, as Thailand is recognised by the EU as a as a hub and as a natural partner. In terms of the um, um, economic side, of course, the means the um, the issue of um, how to maintain ASEAN, particularly Thailand, within the um, supply chain of, of the EU. Now, so in terms of the economic side, we have to ensure that um, whatever uh, policies they have in building resilience within the EU economies, it doesn't have um, protectionist sentiment or protectionist uh, implications towards um, our products. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly when they are pursuing their global um, climate change ambitions, um, they are very green in their approach in their policy. So everything is green. Green port, green products, green design. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to green, it means decarbonisation mm-hmm. um, approaches, mm-hmm. uh, the lowering of emissions um, and um, the uh, co- and the conservation of energy, the use promotion of renewable energy, which they have a lot of technology and innovation, which uh, would benefit Thailand and ASEAN in terms of joint innovation, uh, scientific research particularly in the promotion of innovative um, green um, energy or renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the security defence side, um, of course, they are now becoming more um, interested in the Asia-Pacific region um, to ensure they want to play. The EU is is exerting um, their role in strengthening um, international uh, peace and stability strengthening multilateralism Mm -hmm. and so they are becoming more giving more attention to Asia um, Asia Pacific in which they call the Indo-Pacific strategy and which 
complements with the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific strategy. So there are complementarities. But in terms of security and defense um, approach, um, the challenge is that um, there has to be, it's a sensitive issue. It means that how to ensure that the EU role in our part of the region is to promote um, stability um, and, and security uh, without um, any provocation, which could lead to unintended uh, consequences. So that is uh, uh, a balance to be made between EU's um, enhancement of their role in the Indo-Pacific for security and stability, and at the same time, not giving any um, provocation or any uh, miscalculated signals, which could lead to uh, unintended uh, consequences. So overall, um, I think the, of course, Thai EU relations, Thai EU partnership is um, very, very strong, um, both as the bilateral individual EU members and as a group of the European Commission. Um, and of course, when we talk about Thai EU uh, partnership, it's not just um, the European Commission, which looks at the government side which is the executive branch, but also the legislative branch of the EU, which is the European Parliament. Then there's the European Investment Bank. Um, there is the uh, uh, European Central Bank. Uh, so it's an all-encompassing, multifaceted uh, cooperation and partnership between Thailand and the EU. Thank you so much, His Excellency. I learned a lot today about the relation between Thailand and EU, and I think our listeners do too. Thank you so much. Thank you. was His Excellency Seik Wanamiti, Ambassador of Thailand to Belgium and Luxembourg, and Head of Mission of Thailand to the European Union. And if you want to listen to the previous episodes of the MFA Update, please visit the YouTube channel MFA Thailand, as well as our Facebook page FM88 Radio Thailand English. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. I am Nishika Pumi. สวัสดีค่ะ MFA Updates